Begin the procedure with a bilateral assessment of knee extension to document the preoperative range of motion. The patient is positioned supine with the knee flexed to 90 degrees to maximize the distance from surrounding neurovascular structures. Arthroscopic exploration is performed through standard anterolateral and anteromedial portals. Perform a dynamic exploration of the anterior compartments of the knee, starting with the suprapatellar region to the medial and lateral compartment of the knee. The intercondylar notch area is closely inspected for cyclops lesions or any anterior fibrotic tissue that may impede full knee extension. Dynamic assessment involves passive flexion and extension of the knee. Using a motorized shaver, all cyclops tissue and impinging soft tissues are removed carefully to help achieve full extension of the knee. With the knee maintained at 90 degree flexion, the arthroscope introduced through the anterolateral portal is guided posteriorly between the PCL and the medial femoral condyle to access the posteromedial recess and visualize the meniscal ramp. Under transillumination guidance, a posteromedial portal is safely established using a spinal needle, ensuring adequate distance from the medial femoral condyle to prevent injury to the saphenous nerve and vein. A motorized shaver is introduced through the posteromedial portal, always oriented anteriorly towards the joint to protect neurovascular structures. An initial breach in the posterior capsule is created at the spinal needle insertion site using the shaver, facilitating subsequent insertion of basket forceps. Capsulotomy and capsular release continue laterally and inferiorly with basket forceps, dissecting the capsule from the tibial plateau until gastrocnemius muscle fibers are visualized. The capsular release is extended laterally up to the central septum. With the scope still in the anterolateral portal, the central inferior septum is visualized. It is gently exercised using a shaver introduced via the posteromedial portal, carefully keeping the shaver blade facing anteriorly to protect the popliteal neurovascular structures. The arthroscope is then introduced through the posteromedial portal and then advanced through the septum. Under direct arthroscopic visualization and using transillumination with spinal needle guidance, the posterolateral portal is placed posterior to the lateral collateral ligament and the popliteus tendon at the joint line. With the arthroscope remaining in the posteromedial portal, the motorized shaver introduced through the posterolateral portal continues to remove any residual septal tissue, fully exposing the posterolateral capsule. Similar to the posteromedial side, an initial capsular breach is created at the spinal needle insertion site at the most lateral part of the capsule using the shaver. The basket forceps then complete the capsulotomy and capsular release inferiorly and medially along the tibial plateau until the gastrocnemius muscle fibers are clearly visualized. 